Yeah, I felt yesterday was kind of, uh, there's a certain amount of prophetic, you know, stuff that was coming across to some of you in, cha- in, in a sense of challenge. And the Lord, uh, you know, challenging things at different levels in some of you. And so, uh, you know, you, it can feel a little heavy sometimes when that's when the Lord's doing that. And, and I wanted a bit of a break from that, as you can understand, in the, second, in the last session yesterday. Just, so I just wanted to um, just talk a little bit and give some of my testimony. It's one of the things that um, I'm very aware of just in my life is that the things the Lord has um, sometimes um, brings out through me uh, can be very strong. And uh, sometimes that's the strength of that, just to be transparent a little bit with you, but sometimes the strength of that that comes can be um, not only the Lord, sometimes it can be my own personality. And it's difficult for me sometimes to be able to... Um, you know, to know which part of what I'm expressing is coming from me and which part of it's from the Lord. And so I just wanted to say to those of you who, you know, perhaps felt the um, Lord putting his finger on some things uh, yesterday, just to bring it back to him and, uh, and respond to him with what maybe he was um, challenging you with. Because, you know, there's, a, there's a, a lot of issues within this whole revelation of the Father because we're coming into an experience of his love for us which is a tremendous love for us. His, um, as people say, his love is unconditional. And that's absolutely true. His love is unconditional. But our receiving it is conditional. We, we can be in a place to receive it or we can be in a place not to receive it. And, and one of the things I believe the Lord, um, you know, when the Lord said there's things that he hates, what he hates is the things that are in us that stop us receiving his love. Like God hates pride. And, uh, but the reason why he hates it, not because, because he's got a, 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 just a thing against pride, but it's because pride in us stops us from receiving his love for us, and it keeps us away from him in, in an intimacy. And sometimes the, um, you know, the, the things that we can have going on in our lives that are blocking us from experiencing his love can be things that need to be really challenged because, you know, as we've come into this revelation of the Father's love, one of the things that's been happening in the body of Christ around the world is that some people have been taking love as license. You know, because God loves me, then I have a license to do whatever I wish, even if it's wrong. And, uh, and that's, not, that's not true. However, unless that question comes up, I don't believe we're really preaching the love of God properly. Um, in Romans chapter 6, you see where people say, are saying to, the, um, you know, saying to Paul, uh, they're saying, well, therefore, you know, if, grace, if there's such grace is such a good thing, then shouldn't we even sin more so that grace can even be more expressed? And so the same kind of thing for us, we can be thinking, well, can't we then just sin and do whatever we like because the love of God's going to cover our sin? And, uh, and he's not going to notice our sin because of his love for us. The thing is that our sin separates us from his love. And he is hot against it. Uh, that's, that's one of the, you know, the, the aberrations that's coming into some places in the body of Christ today, um, particularly focused on the love of God. Because we've taken that, you know, if God loves me, then I'm free to do whatever I like. We're not free to do whatever we like. We're free to stay in love. But if we step out of love, then we'll find we start to go into other forms of bondage. Even though we might think they're freedom, there are other forms of bondage. See, we're not free because God loves us. We are free when we become loving. Love is free. Then what that means is not being loved is free, but becoming a loving person. When you are filled with love, you are completely free of everything. Nothing can touch you when you are filled with love and love is coming from you. It's not that you're free because he loves you, but his love sets you free. See, when, when you are loving completely in a place of complete pouring out of love coming out of your heart, no one can even hurt you emotionally anymore. You are invulnerable to offense. Okay. You, you are completely emotionally free when you are a loving person because love cannot be offended. Love keeps no record of wrongs, 1 Corinthians 13 says. Love believes all things, hopes all things. And see, when you, when you are love, then you have faith like you wouldn't, wouldn't believe. But you are 
have hope for every person, you have dreams for every person, no matter even if they're your enemies, you're on their side. Because you, are, you want what love wants for them, even your enemies. And so when somebody insults you, you wouldn't even notice it. Because, it's, um, because love covers those things. And so it's love that is free. And uh, we're, we're growing in these things. And one of the, one of the things about um, this whole revelation of the Father's love is that as we're coming to experience it more and more, we're coming across issues that we never even thought about before. Um, often people will come to me after I've preached on something on the love of the Father and someone will come and ask me a question I think, my goodness, I've never even considered that concept before in my whole life. And it's because love, the love of the Father being poured into our heart expands our understanding into realms that we've never thought about. And so then when you come to begin to put two and two together, uh, you haven't ever thought about those two and two before. You know, those, those two concepts have never been in your thinking, so you've never thought to try to collate them. And, uh, and so then it's, so he's bringing us into new things, and, and problems come up, and one of them has been, you know, when we talk about freedom, that people have thought that freedom is, um, you know, I'm free to do whatever I like because God loves me, I'm free to do whatever I like. And it's kind of the concept is God loves me even when I'm doing wrong or even when I'm, doing, when I'm sinning. And, that's, and that has come into some people's thinking. And of course, there's parts of the body of Christ that are very upset about that. And rightly so. But people that don't have a, a revelation of the Father's love are upset about the sense of license that they're picking up in some Christians who are talking about the love of the Father. You understand? And so we, we, and so we never thought about that. And then we realize that Scripture, Paul understood it himself perfectly because he says in one place, do not let your freedom be an occasion for the flesh. And, and, uh, and we can do that. You know, that can become part of our concept, that our freedom becomes a, a part of, uh, in a fleshly way, in a sinful way, in a, in a fallen way we can begin to walk in the fact that, you know, I can do whatever I like because God loves me. Um, he does love you, but just also realize he loves Hitler too. <laughs> but Hitler was in a place where he was unable to experience or receive that love. And we need to be in a place where we can receive his love. And as I was talking about yesterday, you know, if, if we are if we are walking in ways that we think we are, I'm free to think like this, I'm free to do this, I'm free to, to be like these ways, you can walk right out of experiencing the Father's love and still have a belief structure in your head that the Father is loving you. You understand that? You can still have the belief structure in your head, the Father is loving me all of the time, but in fact you've walked right out of the experiencing of it. And, and the... The whole point of it all in these things is that we stay in his love and that we, we keep away from the things that take, take us out of his love and, and remain in his love. And so I was, um, you know, I know just yesterday as I was sharing uh, some of the things that I was um, saying, I, I just realized there's some uh, sharp edges and it's to, to bring us back and to keep us in his, lo in his love. Uh, his love is not going to be experienced by a person who's not walking where Jesus walked. That the, the point of our lives is to walk as Jesus walked. There's, there's two kind of sides to this, in a, in a sense. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to that. There's two kind of sides to this. Um, one is, you know, as you receive the love of the Father into your heart, it will cause you to become like Jesus. But there's another side to it, and the other side to it, to it is, if you want to walk in the Father's love, you need to walk as Jesus walked, in a purposeful way. For example, you know, just think of it like this, if you want to, if you, you don't want to, but if you did want to, um, walk with me, in a sense, in my life. If you wanted to really be close to me and walk with me and live with me in my life, then you're going to have to stop doing some of the stuff you're doing, because I'm not going to be doing, doing that. Right, you, you're going to have to start. You're know, going to buy a decent suitcase. You're going to you're going to have to um, pay quite a bit of money to keep on airplanes where I am. If you want to actually be with me, you've got to make some changes in your life to be where I am, because uh, you might have to buy yourself some tramping boots and a raincoat. Because when I go into the hills or do those things, you're not going to be able to be with me unless you've got those things. 
so you might have to start getting fitter than you are to be able to keep up with me in, in those kind of environments. Some of you would be absolutely fine and be able to race ahead, but uh, see, if you wanted to walk, if you wanted to really get to know me, you've got to be where I am, right? And it's the same way with the Lord. If we want to walk with Jesus and walk as Jesus walked, we've got to walk where he walks. And we've got to be prepared to leave behind other things and go and be where he is. You see, that's one of the things that's the, the whole issue of the Ten Commandments is when the Lord says, you know, thou shalt not steal. If you're a thief, you're not going to be able to walk with Jesus if you feel, if you steal. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to be close to the Father if you steal. If, if you have the thief's heart, you're not going to be able to be close to the Father because he doesn't have a heart like that. And so we have to leave those things behind. See, the Ten Commandments aren't really saying, you must not do this. What the Lord is really saying in the Ten Commandments is, I don't do those things. And if you want to walk with me, stop doing them. Right? And so there's a part of it for us. Of if we, A lot of times people say to me, I really want to know the Father's love more. Well, there's one way to do that, is to walk with the Father as Jesus walked. And in that, there's a leaving behind of a lot of things. For example, here's another simple example. If, if you want to walk closely with the Father, you've got to have a different value of finance than you have if you've got a selfish or fearful attitude towards finance. Because God is not worried about finance. So if you've got a grasping, you know, security attitude towards finance, if finance is your security, that is a different attitude to what God has. So he, doesn't, he doesn't say those words in uh, Matthew 5 and 6, you know, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, nor yet for your body, what you shall. He doesn't say that just for you. He's saying, that's how I am. And if you want to be walking closely with me, then have a changed attitude towards securities in your life. You know, don't, don't be holding on to those kinds of things. Um, another one is the thing he says, if, if you want to walk with me, then you can't have prejudices about different kinds of people. You, you can't, you know, choose who your friends are in that sense. Because God loves all people, and he's saying, if you want to walk with me and be closely and receive my love and walk in a close intimacy with me, then you've got to put yourself where I am. Because he's not going to put himself where you are. Right? Do you know why? Because we're in a very limited place. You know, we're in a fallen place. We're, we're in a place that is non-reality. We've, we've come to live in places in our life in this world that is not the truth. And we're going to believe things. He's not going to come into that deception, into that lie. He's going to stay in the truth and he's going to stay in freedom. And he's saying, I want you to walk with me. Where I am is a better place than where you are. So come and walk with me and leave behind those things. So if we don't leave those things behind, then they limit us from experiencing the Father's love. Because we, you, know, you can only experience as much love from him as, if, as you're walking where he walks. You understand that? And so there's, you know, sometimes God is very hot against things. Um, and very, um, it can seem like you know, very demanding of us. And, but the, the challenge for us is to respond to all of the things that he says to us throughout our life. He's got lots of time. We've, we've had lots of time. And, he's, and he challenges us on many, many, many things, saying, you know, I want you to experience my love. I want you to walk with me. So come and walk with me. And we can be saying, no, I don't want to walk with you because, you know, I want to hold these ungodly attitudes in my heart. I want to, I want to continue to do these ungodly things in my life. And by doing that, we're limiting ourselves in relationship with him. So we're, the, there's two sides of it. As, as we experience his love, his love will change you into the likeness of Jesus. But we can limit the amount of love that we receive from him by holding different values and different attitudes and, and standing in different places.